Great job. Thank you. Uh, I, I was getting, I was getting uh, ginger beef. Yeah. Harkens back to when we were in Calgary. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think, I think we wanted to have this conversation between the four of us. I mean, it's, it's at a point where we've, you know, wrapped the shoot, had some time to think about the experience, you know, and uh, and bringing Ken on board who, you know, like, we'd love to ask you, like, you know, I know you came to us with the idea, actually, originally. Kind of like, hey, can you do something in the Chinese food space? Right, right. And then we lobbed it back to you. <laughs> right? You did. You did. And then you, did. You, you, you got excited about it. I think it was the time and place. Uh, obviously, when we were having a conversation, we were at the peak of anti-Asian yeah, that's right. You know, like, you know, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. sentiment. And, and I think that it was, I found an, I saw an opportunity. I really saw an opportunity there yeah. to, to have that conversation internally, like at, at work. Yeah. And I think it, people were ready to actually have the conversation. But I also realized that I, I had an agenda in that I wanted you guys to do it, but I also really wanted Jackie to be involved. Whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, I know, thanks. I know. I, 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 I was pushing that hard. I was yeah. really pushing that agenda And the timing hard. worked out too, because then we met Jackie not yeah. that, you know, long after. Like a know, month on, before. That's right, yeah. We were, we were pitching video. another project yeah. with you right yeah, before that. Like, yeah, yeah, of course we know Jackie. Yeah. 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 Jackie too? Amazing. Yeah, very yeah, serendipitous. Yeah. Blind. yeah. yeah. Um, I want to eat while the food is okay, hot. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, because yeah, one good. thing when we were filming the show is there would always be <laughs> eating hot food, food, hot food land and on the then, table. Like, and one then one person would do exactly. Like, yeah. well, well, I got to ask <laughs> you while it. we're on the subject then, yeah. you know, eating cold food. Yeah. You know, I've eaten a lot of cold Chinese takeout in my life. Yeah, yeah? sure. Uh, not even on set, just just in the middle of the night. Um, okay. What was, right, I, I, I'd like to hear what sure. you loved like what was the most memorable dish that you ate on the road yeah on the show i gotta know Ooh. i think it was original ginger beef original yeah, ginger beef yeah speaking of which we have some here it was <laughs> right here. like nothing like i'd ever tasted before and it was way more elegant in texture and flavor than i expected because when you hear of like ginger beef you think it's just gonna be Gloopy and yeah, you know, sitting there forever. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, very cloying. Yeah, you know, but um, but yeah, it was super light. It was super crispy. The texture was right. Anyway, I, my mind was sort of blown. Oh so, my god, yeah, that was so beef. good too. It was like yeah. it was like crispy, like yeah. French fries. I gotta say though, like the story behind it was the guy that invented it was like uh, wanted to create a dish for the local palate. One is something that was easy to eat, so the, he cut up the beef in strips, right? So how it went, yeah. so the people could eat it quickly. Something that would pair well with like beer, booze, yeah. So yeah. it was salty, and then also the Western palate really liked. Uh, they just love gravy in Alberta. It's okay. <laughs> you gotta have gravy, right? That's true. That was so the sauce, right? gravy, gravy on the side of everything. Sauce. So, so it's a. It's like it's like so, the sauce was super liquidy and wet, and you're thinking. It's not gonna be crispy. It's not gonna be. Right. I don't know. And I couldn't stop eating it. It was so really? good. It was so good. Huh. It was like the texture of the beef was like very crispy on the outside, and he put almost like a vinegar, a vinegar sugar, like brine on it. Mm. Wow. Like sauce. And wow. then, so the beef soaked up all that like sweet and sour, but yeah. more sour, like more acidic than you'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And it stayed crispy. That's so almost that's like the magic. That's the alchemy. Yeah, right? yeah, because most of the time when you have like sweet and sour pork or or whatever it is like that's deep fried and you put a sauce on it, the outside gets gooey and kind of a little yeah. bit like mushy. Yeah. But I don't know how he did it. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. He did his magic. It was I think magic. it was like a lot of vinegar in it. That's why. Yeah. yeah. Vinegar it doesn't crispy. soak yeah. as much really? as right. water maybe. Really I don't know. Wow. That is that so unassuming. Life. It really you know? is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan, yeah. what was your favorite meal? That one was up there. Uh, what else was my favorite meal out there on the road? Again, it's kind of like back to saying it's so hard because we'd, we'd always eat everything cold, but Jackie would have it hot. <laughs> we would eat everything really cold after. Yeah. I, um, I really like those handmade dumplings we had in Grand Prairie. Oh, yeah. We had a woman that, that uh, mm. 
you know, that was her thing. She was just like the dumpling lady and, and uh, would do like, uh, like uh, farmer's markets and stuff. And she just made an army of dumplings with, with, with Jackie. Really? It was just so good. They were just beautiful. They, they were green and white. Here we go, some more food. Yeah, she did the, the wrappers in such a way where like the edges of the wrappers were green and then the oh. inside of the wrappers were white so that when you when you put it together it looks like little bok choi. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I had those so before. cute. Yeah, so yeah, good. Yeah. So cute. So good. That I was mean, my. You're you're a dumpling master yeah. yourself. Well, your your not mom me, your mom my, is, yeah, but I mean the the lineage I'm sure passes on to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How how do you feel about making dumplings with somebody else? Well, well it wasn't so any great. somebody else though. She was the dumpling person. But the dumpling person. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. We started talking because we're like dump, we're sharing our dumpling like you know expertise. Like well, my family does like this. She's like my family does like you know. And we yeah. started realizing that actually our families come from the exact same part of China because oh, of the way yeah. that we make dumplings and the way that we eat dumplings is the same. Mm -hmm. Which and is so, the same. Yeah, it's which insane. is crazy. Really? It's a crazy point. Yeah, so wow. I was like, oh, my grandmother used to drink the the water that the dumplings are boiled in. Yeah. Because over time, like when you've cooked, you know, 300 dumplings, that water actually turns into like a, a nice soup. Yeah. And she goes, what part of China are you? is your family from? I'm like, oh, they're from this part. Yeah, and yeah, she's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, my mind you. Like people in other parts what of China don't do that. I've never heard anyone drinking dumpling water. That's a it's delicious. That's a unique thing. Yeah. At that point, when it's been boiled, when you it's boil probably so pretty dumplings. good. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because you get all that meat, all the yeah, vegetables, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then right, you get yeah. like the extra flour on the on the dumplings yeah, actually yeah, yeah, makes yeah. it into kind of a a thicker texture. Yeah. Yeah. Did you manage to capture that? Beautiful moment on camera. Is that yeah. What you did? yeah? Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, it's we really did. neat. It was wow. really good. What a shock! It's such a yeah. small world. Yeah, it is, so. and it's neat that food alone can give you that much information about a person's history and lineage. Yeah. Like the fact mm. that my grandmother drank dumpling water gives her a sense of like, oh, you're we're the same now. Yeah. Even though I've really only been to that part of China once in my life when I was right. 13. Yeah, yeah. And she was, you know, she immigrated, I don't know, like 15 years ago. But it was like, oh yeah, now we're like connected. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. dumpling yeah, yeah. water, right? Mm. <laughs> but that's that's the magic of food. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Did you feel like the dynamic shifted after you found out that you were connected that way? Did you feel like you had more access or did you feel like- Kinship? You, yeah, kinship and I mean, rapport? I, I don't know if I was just imagining it, but I felt like maybe she, she was like, okay, like, you, so like you're you're Chinese then, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you're like, more Chinese. I wasn't sure, but I'm sure you're now. You're more Chinese. Yeah, because you, you know have more how, street cred with her now. Yeah, street yes. cred. That's the. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, water. later that night, the crew had a plate of fifty dumplings <laughs> left over. <laughs> really? At the end of the night. Not pan fried them. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like my dumplings pan fried. I gotta have. I'm a pan fried guy. Okay, great debate. <clears throat> Boiled or pan fried? Pan fried, 100. percent Pan fried. We know. I know. I'm pan fried guy. Yeah. I'm a boiled girl because that's the way I grew up eating them. Yeah. yeah. And that's northern China, right? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. How about yeah. you, Ken? Pan fried for sure. Pan fried. I mean, that was sort of just growing up as a kid. That yeah. Yeah. Crackers, you know, pots yeah. yeah, yeah. That was my When you vibe. drowned your dumpling in the sauce, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's, yeah, 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 that's yeah, the way yeah, I yeah, eat yeah. it. But there's what something about like, the boil that, like, you know, you have more flavor in with the inside. You know, it's not, yeah. it's not about the outside, it's all about what's on the inside. I've right? been telling women that my entire <laughs> life. And, <laughs> <laughs> My favorite meal was the the New Year's meal. We oh, okay. had like a legit New Year's. Chinese I never news. had a Chinese New Year meal before. Really? Um, so that was like, we, what was it? Was fish? Was it like rock cod? Was it or black? <clears throat> yeah, we yeah. had rock, rock cod. cod. You yeah. had the um, hair soup. Yeah. Ryan, Ryan calls it all like hair black hair soup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, which was really yeah. amazing. Like the oh, broth yeah. was amazing yeah, in that yeah, soup. Yeah. Um, soup. And that was like, for me, that was, and we had the, and the, the, the shrimp. Uh, garlic shrimp the garlic on top shrimp. of noodles. Oh, yeah. Do, do yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. talking the about? The vermicelli yeah. noodles. The soy sauce on yeah, ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was I'm terrible for me. Oh, yeah. It's when they steam, when they steam like seafood on top of funsi. Oh, And then they just put the soy on and it's just all the garlic. 
Oh my God, I love oh. that thing. Yeah. It was so, and they really dying. pulled out yeah. the stops yeah. for us. Like, yeah, they, they really they, like, pulled out all the stops. Huge stop. banquet, like, and it was Chinese New Year. Like, yeah. like yeah. They, I'm gonna have to update my favorite thing I ate on the road list, which yeah. is, <clears throat> it's embarrassing to say, but, uh, Cream cheese, cheese dumplings. Oh, yeah. oh, those are so no. good. Oh, that was good. Your, really? One of my favorites. Wait, well, because you can't get those anywhere. Well, you can make it, but I just, yeah. like, I wasn't, ex you know, it's the least, I was like, nah, whatever. These are going to be just like, uh, I don't know, just your generic sweet and sour sauce. And it was. I was just like, I've eaten five of these and I could still go. What's, what's in them? Just like, well, straight cream cheese. Basically, it's like the batter of cheesecake. <laughs> Inside so a good. wonton wrapper, and you deep fry them so really? that the inside becomes like molten cheesecake. No shrimp, good. no shrimp, no, 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 it's a no. sweet thing. Not, I was sweet. expecting savory. Sweet. Yeah, I no, 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 yeah, it sweet. It was delicious. Sweet, oh, and then you put it in basically like sweet and sour sauce. Yeah. Really? No. Dip it and what? eat it. That was a shrimp. That yeah. is like 100% stoner food. Now no. you're revealing yourself <laughs> as a. Yeah. Very specific type of person. Know. I'll <laughs> order a dozen of those next time. Yeah. Where was that? Where, where did you guys? I was in Grand Prairie. Prairie. Yeah, that yeah. was. Yeah. That is such a niche thing. I'm curious of how you found out that that was even a thing in Grand Prairie. That's Producer. Very niche. Producer found that. Really, Joanna. Joanna did. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. she found, and the same guy. Oh, sorry, not in, also in Grand Prairie, which I'd never seen before. Was uh, Jackie went for the first time ice fishing. Pregnant with a giant drill, mm -hmm. auger. That was super fun. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, we. In minus 30. I don't think we actually caught any fish, right? No. 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 Oh, I know it's I didn't. Did. Yeah. So oh, did Jackie did. Th Jackie did think she caught a fish because she uh, she pulled that out, but it was a bait. Ah. Uh, yeah. I was like, oh, oh my god, I think I got something, and I was like, wow, these fish here are really small. Yeah. And he's like, no, that's like the. That's the bait. So yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's a really yeah. good segue to talking about dangerous things we did to Jackie. Dangerous things we did with Jackie, yes. Dangerous what are the dangerous things? We things? Do to Jackie. Yes. I didn't really think it was that dangerous, but I guess. That's when you know it's the most dangerous because you don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. We're, like, we're on ice oblivious to you yeah, in a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah dangerous things we did with Jackie. So that would be dangerous for sure. Yeah, because yeah. the, you know, ice the guys was like. Yeah, and the guys that yeah. like, were driving, he's like, yeah, you should really only follow the tracks in front of you. You don't want to veer off anywhere else. We get into the pickup truck with Jeremy. He immediately just starts driving out into the middle of the lake. How thick is the ice on the, the lake now? I would say almost like 80 centimeters. Yeah. So we the, won't fall through, right? Ah, uh, <laughs> you know, it's what? more I'm hesitating. More on the ice lake, never 100% safety. Oh, oh, you might get a fish? No. No? Okay. <laughs> I don't feel anything. <laughs> did you tell us not to buckle up in there too? Just in yeah. case not you fell. Not to buckle up? Yeah, yeah. in case yeah. you fall through the ice and you can't. This is how dangerous it is. Yeah, yeah, they're just like, you need so. to get out as fast as yeah. possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, There's no safety precautions. No safety precautions. Uh, That's terrifying. That's something I learned about you, Jackie, on mm -hmm. this trip, and how, how you're just, you're very adventurous. And you really kind of just like, all right, you're just very, very cool about things. Yeah. You're, you know, it could have been very, very different working with a different you know, host, I think. Now I feel like I should have freaked out more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, should I have freaked out more? <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we did we did that first uh, crazy monsoon. <clears throat> yeah, this driving us was that was wild. pretty. That was pretty yeah. dangerous. Yeah. yeah, that was dangerous. You know, dangerous. where we're driving that and was, like... Yeah, it was raining unbelievable Raining, torrential rain. downpour. Rain. But yeah. the roadside hot dog, when I was craving a hot dog, was well worth it. Yeah. yeah. It was well worth all of the... Yeah, after we, we passed... The, yeah, we had hot dogs after. Really? <laughs> yeah, the like small at, town. Like in Cash Creek. Really, Cash at a Creek. roadside yeah. place. Yeah, yeah and then we checked, like, oh, there's, like, landslides and, like... And we'd be driving, and it's like, oh, there's just... You know, a one boulder. meter boulder, yeah. so we'd swerve around the boulder, and we're yeah. like, okay. Yeah. It's biblical. It was like, insane. Yeah. And then we were stuck, and then we had to fly out. We couldn't drive back, yeah. Yeah. And the highway yeah. didn't get rebuilt months until months later. That's wild. But, um, yeah, that was pretty up there. I'm trying to think what other crazy, what other crazy things did we get Jackie to do? We got someone to read Jackie's fortune. Oh, oh yeah. I heard about this. Yeah. I heard about this. Tell me, I guess, about me. You may get uh, like uh, two children. Two? Yeah. What? Well, let's see. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Even now you... I'm sweating. 
I'm gonna have another kid? How is that possible? What about future stuff? I won't say you change a person, but uh, you will change a lot of value. Oh. So this user is your switching year. I've never really focused on money as the intention behind why I do things. She's like, all your values will change. And I'm like, but I like my values. If I'm a goat and my son will be a tiger, yes. are we going to get along? From here, your children will bring a, you a lot of joy. So your family with your children is a very harmonious, very harmonious. Oh, good. I'm still weirded out that you're saying children mm. in plural. <laughs> I'm just joking. But Ken, wow. is like superstition a big thing in your family? Or growing up? No, my, my parents, there's only one thing they were superstitious about. I have no idea why. Uh, two things, two things, two things. First thing would be New Year's related, actually, uh, where you're not supposed to cut your hair, clean your house, yeah. uh, anything like that, because you'll sweep away the luck. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You, any of that. Yeah. Uh, so there, there's one of those. I would say another superstition is you, after going to a cemetery, you don't go straight home. Oh. You don't go straight home. Huh. You okay. want to bring that home with you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, you yeah, got to sort of like shake it off. Shake it off, yeah, deke yeah. out the ghosts. <laughs> deke know, out the it's ghosts. It's the spirits, uh, you know. That's why you go eat after or you go uh. to after. You never go home after a funeral or the cemetery. Because but did you, at the end of the funeral, did you ever get the coin? <clears throat> Lucky no. to get it. So every maybe you I would did. get it, maybe and you get a coin, right? Yeah. Get like some money, and my parents would. You never take that money home. You have to spend it I have, right away. I have. I Do have, not. I and have, so you always, I you have. always buy like a lottery ticket with it. Yeah. Because it's supposed to be lucky. Mm, this was wow. like the filming of the show. It's always like, did this happen to you? When you think, did your mother threaten you with a feather duster? Because it yeah. happened to me. Yes. Yeah. Were, you, were you a slipper, a wooden spoon, or a feather duster? Right. Yeah. 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 Feather it's duster. like a version of Clue. Yeah. Like, Wait a second. <laughs> slipper, that's like so, that's so like level Soft. one. Level, level one. one. No level one. one. Yeah, there's no oh, pain in a slipper. You would just laugh oh. at a slipper. You'd Maybe be like, all right, oh, hit me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah I guess it's the it's, uh, severity of the crime, right? It's yeah. Oh, true. Right, yeah. Or just whatever's in like nearest proximity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, oh, it's on my foot. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I you, guess it's the one thing definitely like filming this is like weird, kooky things that I did in my family, feather duster, whatever, these little weird Chinese traditions. People thousands of miles away do the same exact thing. Yeah. And, like, yeah. how do these things carry and transcend time to other? Communities and, and Tupperware and, in the back, in, in yeah. the door. Uh, yeah, yeah, so like, yeah, with this, well, yeah, we share the same one where, like, every Monday, you know, mom's always making me tons of, like, food for the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you were telling yeah, me yeah, how yeah. you were saying, like, you have a, you have a recycling, your garbage, and then mom's Tupperware bin. Oh, yeah. To return, right? Yeah. Joe has a, a mom's Tupperware bag. <laughs> yes. And we put it back in the bag, it goes back to mom, she refills it with yeah. food, and it comes exactly. back. Exactly. It's yeah. great. See, yeah. this is this was this, this uh, fresh prep service was <laughs> yeah. generations in the making. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why the tech companies didn't come to this earlier, exactly. honestly, because they, they've been doing it for a long time. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah makes yeah, sense. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's so interesting to find these. Did you all go quirks. to uh, Chinese school or have? I hated, I hated I Chinese school. Yeah. I hated Chinese school. I was just like making. Uh, did you no, go to? No, I cheated through the entire thing. <laughs> I still can't spell my name. Yeah. It's, yeah. No, I just yeah. I got put in Chinese school way too late, where I was around like five year old. Oh, and I was okay. Like eight, yeah. yeah, you yeah. know, or eleven or whatever. And so I got put in around these kids. And so you're never taking that stuff seriously because no. you're amongst literally babies you yeah. know and so so i didn't i never took that seriously and i in a lot of ways i wish i i wish i read chinese i mean that would come in real handy so big question jackie is your kid going to go to chinese school Ooh. you know i talked to joe about this <laughs> yeah because i didn't have a great experience like my chinese school was really like kind of ghetto like <laughs> right <laughs> It right. was it was in Chinatown in the, one of the churches. It always is. As, yeah. as was mine. As was was mine. it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wonder if we went to the same one. Possibly. Okay. Possibly. Anyway, yeah. so and the teachers were like not really teachers. They were just moms, Someone's probably. Uncle. Yeah. And they didn't have like 
I just remember there's this one woman who who t ripped the antenna off her car so that she could use it as a pointer. Ooh. I'm glad oh. that that's all she used it for. I really wow. glad that's all. <laughs> I'm paying attention now. She did it the first day of class. <laughs> She's just like, yeah. I need something to point with. Car. So yeah, my hand doesn't car work. Either, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it wasn't like a great, um, I don't know. I don't think I learned anything. And so Joe was saying that, no, I went to a really good school. I learned a lot. We should do this for our, our kid. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I don't, I mean, whatever. But I'm curious, there. that begs a question. You know, I, I think we all grew up in uh, first generation immigrant households where, uh, you know, we, we were raised with these values, these certain types of practices, yeah. these certain superstitions. Surely. Um, without even trying, right? You know, our parents are not, well, they're trying because they're trying to hold on to something, but they're also, not really trying to teach us. We're just living amongst it, yeah, you know. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And you're all parents. You're you're yeah. becoming a parent very soon, but yeah. you're both parents. Yes. What what is what, what what's your stance on on imparting bits and pieces of, of your upbringing uh, as uh, you know Chinese Asian people? Uh, and what do you keep? What do you leave behind? Yeah, this is a good question. I think for me, um, like I think making the show has made me want to revisit a lot of those traditions that I kind of like lost and forgot. We were in Kelowna and my grandma would always make fresh soy milk, huh. right? And she had this machine and it was, you too. Yeah. Yeah, and it was just like two stones and it, and it was just like, it was amazing, it was so good. And I was like, man, we have to, you have to use this machine on the show somehow, some way. And we did, we brought it out to Kelowna because there was a gentleman who, his mom was one of the first Chinese immigrants to the community. And she made a living selling uh, soy products to, yeah. uh, to the community. Mm -hmm. So that's how we tied it together. But I tell you, like that machine hasn't been turned on in maybe like 30 years. Oh, wow. And then the day we brought it, I was like, I'm hoping this thing is going to work on the shoot today. We turned it on. We're like, yeah, it's, it should work. Let's hope so. And, we uh, brought a Vitamix. <laughs> yeah, we brought a Vitamix. We fired up. <laughs> and just the sound of the machine just like, boom. Wow. Took me back to childhood and I was like, oh man, and the yeah. smells, I was like, this is amazing. And so I definitely want to, to make that for my kid. Right. And now I've seen Jackie do it, I can probably figure it out now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Like, yeah. Asking for culinary authenticity in Chinese Canadian food is a bit besides the point, especially when you're just trying to pay the bills. It seems to be a luxury, and so is cooking as a passion or for joy, as was the case for me. And so Chinese Canadian restaurant owners did what all immigrants did. They cooked food they knew, adapting to local tastes and local ingredients, and made sweet and sour pork with pineapple, or in my case, with nectarines. So for this episode, you're gonna have to cook a few dishes. <laughs> yeah. And Jack is like, yeah. um, I don't really cook a lot of stuff. Like, this is not... But you know, you made. That's I've never made that. I've never same, made this you know? thing before. Uh, yeah, I think I was nervous because it's like, well, why don't we uh, do sweet and sour pork? And I'm like, well, I've never made it before. <laughs> <laughs> but like, okay. Let me tell you, Ken. Solid sweet and sour pork. She yeah, made it I with uh, peaches. Peach, with peaches. Peaches. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, it makes sense. It's amazing. But like. And, and or like pork and apple soup, right? I was like, so good. I've never made that before. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, or like soy milk, never yeah. made that before. No, right. No. So I feel like it was just like sticky you know, rice stuffing. Yeah, sticky <laughs> rice stuffing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Again, speaks yeah. to your adventurous spirit. Yeah, that was my only thing. Like, I I didn't want to be on camera and have like the audience be like, oh yeah, she's an expert at Chinese food. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I formerly ran a, pace, a yeah. French bakery. Yeah, 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 like, yeah I yeah, can yeah, make yeah, a cake, yeah. but yeah, like, you yeah. know, swings our pork, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Did, you feel, did you feel like you had to call your mom at some points to just get the confirmation of, hey, how do I do this? How do I do that? Because that's how I do it. Every time I cook something, yeah. you're calling your mom, right? I did call my mom about the soup because I know she makes that. Yeah. But she, the, a lot of these dishes, like she would have never made soy milk herself either. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Soy milk. My mom makes yeah. soy milk. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Out of a blender. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My mom is, you know, she she worked a lot, so she was just like, 
I don't know, I'm gonna make what's easy, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, never made soy milk and never made tofu dessert. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you oh, made tofu sweet tofu dessert. dessert. Yeah. Tofu dessert is so, so good. good, so good. <laughs> but here's a question, so Danny is kind of like, I'm the outsider. He's a bit of an outsider. What are you talking about? I'm eating with a fork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, one of my chopsticks fell off, so I'm like, all right, I'll switch the fork. Here, here. But what well, was you your work, yeah. like, pretty much the entire crew was all Chinese Canadian. Right. With the fact of Danny, who was, was Filipino. Jewish Filipino. Jewish yeah. Filipino. Uh, yeah. And it's great to have Danny kind of like... Well, hold on a minute. Like, you guys are all taking this for granted here. What does apple soup yeah. mean? <laughs> oh, exactly. I, mean, right? like, I grew up with them. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Oh, easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You don't right? know? I yeah. Mean, yeah. On. I mean, what were, you had, there was a lot of firsts for you trying apple soup or yeah. the yeah. stuff. What did you think of the, the sticky rice uh, turkey stuffing? That was amazing. That was a great. I like. Right. I'd love to recreate that. Those oh. guys, that there were two brothers that oh, yeah. were just like cooked up a storm for us, and they were so like in Red Deer. Yeah, in Red Deer, they were just like. What did they bring? They brought the sticky rice. They brought chow mein. They brought. Like, they made their own yeah. kombucha. For us, yeah. really? Which wasn't part yeah. of the show. Which wasn't part of the show, but like, <laughs> but, like the kombucha was so good. So good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they brought. Oh, they did that uh, soup with. Um, mm. Their soup was amazing. Canada goose. Yeah. Did Wait, it, like that actual yeah. animal? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually wow. really good. Wow. Yeah. They were so like. That's one thing I think I realized is that. Every single person was so generous with their time and their yeah, food yeah. and just energy and every. They were so so o overly giving. Like yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. It was awesome. cool. Yeah, awesome. that's something that I, I learned about Chinese culture in general. It's just like so generous, yeah. so giving. Uh, you need to eat at all points. Like yeah. I was never like hungry on this sh on the shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so disciplined. Yeah. Like there was one restaurant, I think yeah. it was like in Vernon. Yeah, yeah. Where the yeah. mother was the oh owner God. of the restaurant, right? Yeah. And she, and she had two kids. Two kids are like they're like eight and five years old or whatever. They're like one kid's like learning how to play piano in the back of the restaurant while the yeah. other kid's doing math homework, and then they're like doing dishes like at you know nine yeah. p.m. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, my kid doesn't do that. How do I get my kid <laughs> yeah. to do that? Yeah. Right. It was like, so impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It like was yeah, they they basically just cornered off a section of the restaurant to create a study area for their kids. Oh yeah. Because yeah. it's like well they're always working, so where are their kids gonna go? Yeah. There's no yeah. childcare. Yeah. And then they walk themselves to piano lessons after. Down the street. And the mom doesn't even have to say, go and practice piano. Yeah. She just gets, puts <laughs> yeah. her bag down and just sits at the piano. Like no really? one needs to say anything. Yeah. yeah, it was so impressive. Oh. That's what sort of, I, I, that's why this show, when I heard about this, yeah. uh, you know, uh, that's why it, it feels so resonant to me because that was like the first 10 years of my life is being raised in a Chinese restaurant being in the corner doing my homework yeah. because I had nowhere else to go, you know what I mean? And so it's surprising to me. I thought that that experience was gone. I didn't realize that that yeah. experience still exists. Yeah. Yes. You know, it in such does. a prescient way. And then yeah. there's the other side of that spectrum where like the, the, the family has passed on the restaurant to the children and now the children are like saying, peace out, I'm out. Let's yeah. cash in right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm dropping the torch. Yeah. yeah. And finally we're at a stage in our life. This is a family in, um, Kelowna, you know, no, they ran in a, too. Yeah, it was a Vernon. Yeah. Clearly a universal yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, ran a killer Chinese restaurant, did well, huge brand new building. Yeah. And uh, and it was like, you know, it's time. And we, they've, they've hit a point where it's like, you know what? My dad has worked his butt off, you know, and he's like in his 70s. It's like, we got to put the brakes on and enjoy what's left. Mm. And yeah. it was just like, it was incredible to see that. And they were just like, you know, I'm sure they, they miss a bit of, of the, the Chinese restaurant, you know, business, but... And they made that amazing uh, egg dish, what's it called? Yeah, yeah so Daddy's never had that too. We went to their it. house and they made yeah. the, you know, uh, the, the... It's a steamed egg. Steamed custard. egg. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I make that all the time. I make that all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still do. Yeah, it's like two eggs and some water, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's all you need. You know, a little yeah. bit of sesame oil, a little bit of soy, yeah, absolutely. It's interesting to think about the idea of family because, you know, Chinese culture is so grounded in family, but it's also grounded in la labor and hard work. Yeah. And those things actually contradict each other a lot of the time in these experiences and these stories because it's like, if you're working that hard, you're actually not with your family. So it's like interesting to see yeah. 
that uh, that people are giving it up to be closer to family or to, to get, get as much time. I'm literally sending my kid to Mandarin school because of the experience I had <laughs> on the <this> show. <laughs> I swear. Wow. I swear. Yeah, some of that ethic in I like there. Ethics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Discipline. Yeah. Discipline. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I think that just knowing these stories and seeing this stage of immigration, like you see like newer immigrants as well, like uh, trying to you know, settle and they're working really hard to create a home for themselves. So watching all of this, also going back to the museum in mm. Kelowna mm. and reading some of the letters that oh, people yeah, had yeah, written right. wow. um, uh, back to China or ch from China to them. And they had archived these letters and it was just heartbreaking, like letters that would say like, okay, you know, uh, please send money for your father's funeral. And, um, you know, we're we're just uh, trying to send our, our kids to school. Hopefully one day our grandchildren will benefit from the money yeah. that you're sending. Because yeah. I'm never seeing you again. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm never coming seeing back. you. Yeah, yeah. You're never seeing your kids grow up, but you may maybe have the idea of a future grandchild succeeding. Yeah. Yeah. And then I realized, oh my gosh, like, now I know where my parents come from and why they worked so hard because they, it, I don't think it's as opposite as we think it is. It's opposite in Western culture, but in Eastern culture, family's so important and that's why you work so hard. Mm -hmm. You work hard so that your family, because you love your family. Yeah. And it's like spending time isn't, um, it, it, it's not, their love is rooted in survival not um mm. not the extra luxury you right, know right. and so i'm like oh wow i can see why my mom like she uh, instead of asking me like how are you she'll ask me you know how's your work going like are you making enough money <laughs> yeah. i feel triggered by this uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know and yeah. it's like okay it's her way of saying like i care about you this is very true yeah. well, that was one of the things because if the someone episode, didn't right? care about you they wouldn't ask those questions exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like like yeah. chinese parents show their love through food mm -hmm. yeah you know not yeah. through the i love you you know no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. no i've i've always said that uh you know my parents are not the kind of i love you types but they'll cut up a fr they'll peel a fruit and cut it up and put like <laughs> like two like toothpicks in it and give it to me and that is their yeah. version of i love you i you think know? that's yeah. the most loving thing that you can do for someone is a uh, peel um, a pomelo oh, yeah. for them because that thing is so annoying to peel. Is, yeah. But my parents yeah. do it for me all the time, and I'm yeah. like, man, yeah. that's love. Every time I visited my grandmother Nai Nai, she would make me fresh bread on the griddle. They were hot, crispy, filled with a caramel-like drizzle of melted brown sugar that would drip out when I bit into it. My other grandmother Lao Lao would make me scallion crepes. They were thin, light, with crisp edges and fragrant from the bits of green onion, and Lao Lao never stopped making them until I was full. My mother cooks this way for me too, and now that I'm pregnant, she has planned out 30 different soups to make. Yes, that's right, a pot of soup every single day for an entire month. In Chinese culture, we don't greet each other with a, hello, how are you? Instead we say, Hi, Le Ho, Sik Cho Fan Mei Ya, which means, hello, have you eaten? I never heard my mom say the words, I love you, but I never doubted that I was loved. This might sound strange to some, but it's because in Chinese culture, food isn't just food, food is love. Well, I'm curious, what, uh, you know, thinking about crazy things, knowing the ice fishing story there. Yeah, sure. Uh, Danny, I'd, I'd love to know what you thought was like, this week, I'm so glad we got this on camera. This is the moment. This is an incredible moment. Mm -hmm. uh, well, for me, it, uh, it was kind of a bittersweet one for me because uh, this is the Christmas episode. And so uh. I'm Jewish. And then so every Jew has the same tradition of having Chinese food on, on Christmas Eve. And, uh, and we, we went to Red Deer, and we were looking for a Jewish gentleman, and he, he came in, we, we, we found Mark, one. Finding a Jewish family in Red Deer is like, 
you would search the ends of earth. I was putting it out there on social media. Does anyone know any Jews in Red Deer? And like nothing, crickets. Really? Really? Yeah. And we, wow. we found one guy through a church group. He was a Jew for Jesus. And he showed up with like the full Jewish regalia. I was like, just strip that off. You don't need right, that right, right now. Right, 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 right. Um, and he's such a nice guy. His name is Donovan. He loved lemon chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, he told us his life story. Mm -hmm. And then, and then he, uh, we found out that he passed away. Yeah, yeah um, shortly, on yeah. Christmas Eve, shortly after. I was like, wow. Yeah. You know, so we're, I'm glad we were there to capture his story. His family has asked for the footage, and you know, that was mm -hmm. like the last time you know he had been on camera and kind of told his story. So I'm glad we were there for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a beautiful story. I mean, yeah. yeah, being able to at least serve community that way of sure. giving the footage and uh, and capturing a story cool. coincidentally that way. Would you do this again? <laughs> How would I do it? Oh, yeah, would I do it again? And would I do it differently? And would you do this again? You know, I I <laughs> would. The yeah. dangers that you went through. Yeah, there, you know? let's make it more dangerous, guys. <laughs> I would do it again, and I th I think in large part because you guys are so fun to work with, like genuinely. <laughs> and I've said this over and over yeah. again, especially to Joe, like I'll come back from a shoot and be like, those guys are amazing. Like you're not only great at what you do, like your art, craft, I don't know how you call it, but you're also just really great at creating a positive environment yeah. to to do something. So yeah, I would do, yeah, well, it's just fun. A lot of the, like the, the shoots that we go on, we don't stay in hotel rooms, right? We all kind of, we, it's a big road trip, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, and yeah. we really kind of like bond as a family when we're driving to these places and yeah. we stay in an Airbnb together. We kind yeah. of just like cook lunch and dinner and breakfast together. We yeah. come down in our pajamas and like, <laughs> you know, Jackie's like making coffee in the morning. It was like yeah. croissants out of the oven. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wish. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was like to, in bed by like 8 p.m. We're like, Jackie's got to go to sleep. It's early day tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I come back yeah, downstairs yeah, yeah. and I'm like, just granola and yogurt every morning. Yeah. That was my yeah. go-to. That's good. Do you feel like there's, after all of this, after, you know, episodes, multiple episodes of this, <clears throat> there's still more story to tell? Or do you think you've, you've got most of it? I'd love to go, like, you know, outside of BC and Alberta. I'm sure there's definitely, there's always something, right? There's always a story to be told that's, that's different. And, um, yeah. For sure, like Toronto has their lobster, Mm -hmm. lobster sauce like they have this very specific lobster sauce that everyone eats on Spadina like and <laughs> you you're eating really? Chinese food here and you'll never find a lobster sauce yeah. on yeah, like yeah. noodles here yeah. even Chinese restaurants um, I think it would be neat to go to like Newfoundland Oh, yeah. You yeah, know? I'm, I'm down to go to Newfoundland, Fogo Island. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Eat Chinese food at Fogo Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's do that. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's what's amazing about the Chinese restaurant is its versatility, right? It's, no, it's, it's so versatility, true. And it exists outside of Canada in sort of the deepest parts of yeah. all continents, you know, because yeah. of it, you know, because it's designed to be that way in a lot of ways, right? Ryan and I were talking about this the other day. We're like, how come Chinese food doesn't have, there's no fast food Chinese. You mean drive through? Drive through. You know, like, they have, right. because we're talking about the Jollibee, it's like, oh, yeah, it's like yeah. Jollibee, because it's like, you know, uh, Filipino. Know, Filipino, like <clears throat> spaghetti and hot dogs and everything, but yeah. how come there's no drive through Chinese? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that's like, true. It's there always fast and efficient and it's yeah like food yeah. comes steaming and yeah. it's in a food court yeah right so you know you could just <laughs> i think like, it's the lack of handheldness in the chinese there aren't cuisine. a lot of yeah. handheld stuff well you've got your bows you've you got your the bows. Things, things, i think about you know, it you're right uh, i think that uh, a lot of things that we deem as fast food in, in western culture is actually seen not as fast food here when we think about pad thai mm -hmm. Uh, or any noodle dish in, in Thai food, Thai, yeah. Thai food, that is actually street side yeah, takeaway, that's right? True. That's street side, eat it and go right. ASAP, yeah. get out of here. Yeah. Pho is that same thing, right? It, it's it's actually, the fast food exists in a very different way. I think when we think about fast food, I think we think grab and go. Mm -hmm. Here, it's about how fast the, the food comes out. Totally. You know? So totally. It's, it's a different type yeah. of thing. We didn't Dinner talk about the where? salted fish. Did, you, did they tell you about the salted fish? fried rice that we had on the road. No, which one is this? So the guy that took us ice fishing actually salts his own fish. Mm, nice. And then what he what he does is um, he doesn't put them in tiny, tiny pieces because traditionally it's like expensive, right? Yeah. 
But he, since he salts his own, he's like, whatever, I don't care how much it costs. He put, he actually cuts them into fillets. Really? Yeah. And he puts them in like yeah. on top. No, he he just fries it, all in. Fries it but it, really they're actually like little mini in. fish steaks, and the bones are so tender that you can eat it too. It's <laughs> crazy, was and it's this not too. Is this the guy too... who had the restaurant attached to the laundromat? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was yeah, great. Was that was a cool oh. restaurant too. Yeah. That, yeah. that that fried rice is one of my favorite versions of fried rice. Yeah. Yeah. You know and. Uh, and that the, the, he left the bones in there. Yeah. Yeah, which Pretty is bold. yeah. I thought. Yeah, microwaving that at the Telus uh, cafeteria. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not uh, yeah, I'm gonna wait for everybody to leave. I'm like, okay, <laughs> is everyone done? Okay, let's. We've come to Wally's to make ham yu gai lap chao fan, salted fish and chicken fried rice. It's a simple dish, usually with ribbons of iceberg lettuce strung through the rice, scrambled egg, and little bits of pungent salted fish like anchovies, lending its intense umami in every bite. Instead, this time, we're using Jeremy's freshly caught fish to make a homemade ham yu, salted fish. So what's the process? Do you... Uh, we have to put in the salt for four or five days. Where did you learn how to do this? Oh, we, uh, from my mother, you know. The salted fish fried rice is a very common dish that you would order at a restaurant. I've grown up eating it, I love it. He catches the fish himself, then salts them, uses that salted fish. I've never had it like that before. It's almost like putting anchovies in something. Yes, actually, yeah. yes. It's not the main to, it's not, how to say it. The it's, main dish. Yes, yeah. yeah. that's a, really much a like flavor. A, it's flavor. just a flavoring. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You can't cook. Chinese food like this at home because there's no way that your your wok at home will ever get so hot to the point where it's actually burning red. Normally I've seen it like the ham yu is really small. Yeah, yeah. But you're making like really big ham yu. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try to get some ham yu in there too. Okay, let's see. Mmm. Wow, that's good. It's so good. Like, it's really salty, but like good salty. But you can also taste all the freshness of the fish. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, that's very good. Hungry for more. Hungry for more. Hungry for more, yeah. As you talk to the funder of the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hint, hint. No, no. I, I think uh, I, I have to say, you know, um, and, and I said this before, and yeah. we started with this, this saying that I came to you all yeah. with a plan in mind. You know, <laughs> I came, I came to you both knowing that I want to work with you both. Yeah, yeah. You know, you I had it all worked out. Kevin. Stars aligned <laughs> somehow. Yeah, all yeah exactly. Out. Uh, what a coincidence! And then, and then, you know, knowing that I knew Jackie, you would be a fantastic host, and that you had the appetite uh, and mind for to be the person on the road. You know, and and I think as a as a person as, uh, who's collaborating with you no. all, I think it's a real honor to get these stories out there no, and to bring like nuance that. and to have the the amount of time that you have yeah. uh, throughout these episodes to really explore these mm. stories and because a lot of time we fly by them and we think we know the whole story and so I, and I think that this goes to show that we don't and we then there's still a lot more to explore so. Thank you to you all for oh, thank actually. You. Yeah. So the question yeah. is, um, who's gonna be looking after the kid when we uh, hit the road again? Joe. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Joe and Grandma. Joe and yeah. Grandma. Yeah. Grandmas and grandpas. Mm. Yeah. Multiples. There's so many people. Please. Takes a village, give me, doesn't give it? Give me an excuse <laughs> just to like have some fun and get away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Season two. Season, Season two. two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Season yeah. Two. Start working on that fish. Yeah. <laughs> Chinese Canadians spread all over our country work tirelessly and discreetly behind their restaurants, acting as community centers, always with a pot of hot coffee, truck stops serving familiarity with a side of chicken chow mein. They're places where locals celebrate birthdays and graduations. They are, unintentionally, the ink with which we've written the Chinese Canadian story. And yet, who are these people? And what are their stories? Even through my youth, the history of Chinese Canadians was often glazed over in school. 
Only in my 30s did I learn about the darker stories of segregation, Chinese people having no official right to vote until 1947, of young Chinese boys immigrating to work railways only to be sent into tunnels like canaries to die. And with all the incidents of Asian hate during the pandemic, I began to wonder, as a Chinese Canadian myself, how is it that I know so little? This is my story, traveling by rail into small Canadian towns in search of Chinese Canadian food, and the people that connect the dots of my story and my Chinese Canadian heritage. <laughs> were, you, were you a slipper, a wooden spoon, or a feather duster? Yeah. 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 <laughs> It's like a version of Clue. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Wait a second, <laughs> Flipper, that's like so like level one. Level one. <laughs>